Hello, Brad Schelke here at Conversations with Mormons. This is part four of Opening Eyes to Life. Last week we explored the importance of opening my own heart wide so as to welcome a person into God's wide open heart. This makes witnessing natural. Since I'm a Christian, the Spirit of God lives in me. Jesus says the Holy Spirit in me is the power of God to expose unbelievers to sin, righteousness, and judgment. The exposure to these truths is what helps a person see a need to trust in Christ and isn't that what we all want for our non-Christian friends? It's certainly what I want. Exposing people to these truths isn't about pointing a finger at the other person's flaws. That's the way the world corrects. Decades ago, my mentor told me that we Christians tend to yell across the river to non-Christians and tell them to join us on our side. He said he took a different approach. He crossed over and put his arm around the non-believer and said, this is scary, let's do it together. That's a picture of my mentor's heart attitude and is part of what made him such an effective evangelist. He didn't hesitate to get close to non-Christians and he won many to Christ, sometimes even in their first conversation. God's way of exposure is subtle, personal, and powerful. How does God's way work? Jesus came to show us who we are in light of who He is, and this melts our hearts. Because I'm a Christian, God is always pointing me to who I am in light of who Christ is, and because of that, the Spirit is able to point me to who Christ is for the person I'm speaking to or thinking about. When He does this, I'm able to speak kind, gentle words that point non-Christians to who Christ is for them. Transformation always happens in the presence of Christ crucified, in seeing and pondering His death in our place. I need that transformation every moment, every day, and so does every Mormon I'm privileged to meet. Seeing Jesus melts my heart. This transformation, this melting, can be quick or slow depending on our life experiences. God's Spirit has already exposed and melted me concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. I need to remember how that exposure works and welcome Mormons to join me in basking in the power of that exposure. Sin is rebellion against dependence on God. We're all guilty of this rebellion. Righteousness is about right relationships and God's way of setting relationships right. Judgment is about God's condemnation on the enemy's lie that hope is found in self-effort and self-righteousness. In the presence of Christ, His perfection melts away all our comparisons with ourselves and others. We are left standing face to face with the only human who lived the flawless life that we know we should be living. We realize we are spiritually bankrupt, deserving condemnation, and in need of a righteousness or right relationship found outside ourselves. Christ says God is the only one with the right to condemn us. In His presence, we hear no condemnation. Instead, we hear words of love revealed at the cross. My child, I've come to set things right. I died for your sins so that you don't need to die in your sins. Welcome to the party. I want to tell you a bit more about the older Mormon I mentioned the last two weeks. She had experienced over 70 years of religious training that urged her to not evaluate herself compared to Christ, but to lower standards and make them reasonable. No matter what angle I used to urge her to measure me, herself, and others by Christ, she kept making comparisons. That meant that she wasn't in the presence of Christ yet, and her eyes weren't open to God's goodness. But she had warmed up to me, and her eyes were open to me. I took her to the cross, and she admitted that Jesus died to take care of all her sins, as well as all the sins of those who hurt her. She immediately reverted to her old thoughts and declared boldly that we have to repent to be forgiven. In Mormonism, repent means to try to stop sinning. I urged her to change her mind about repentance and see it not as about fixing our behavior, but about giving up judging by our low expectations and embracing God's mind of judging by Christ, who never did evil and who died to put away all sin. That made her a little curious. Even though she clung tightly to leniency, I gave her an assignment to pray for two things. To thank God for giving her His good expectation of always measuring people by Christ's perfection, and to thank God for sending Jesus to die in her place to resolve all her sin. I was surprised when she said she might do it. Her eyes were beginning to open. What would have happened if instead of focusing on righteousness, I had sought to convince her to leave her wrongness and join my rightness? We'll talk about that next time. Until then, please join me in thanking God for giving you the privilege both of being yourself in Christ and of inviting others to join you in basking in the exposure of God's Spirit. Welcome to the conversation.